Hi, it's me, Waffles. This is a video about JSON, which is what all Minecraft World Gen data packs are written in. My friend Ender actually recommended that I make this video, and they helped write the script as well, which was really helpful. We just thought it would be a good idea to make this video for people who are new to World Gen data packs and have not had experience with JSON before. I've linked Ender's YouTube and Twitch in the description, and I'll put them up on screen as well. You should definitely go check them out. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it is used everywhere from your browser to sending information over the internet. What I'll be using JSON for in my videos is for Minecraft data packs, changing world gen, uh, creating loop tables and advancements, and other data pack related things. This does not apply to function data packs because those are written in Minecraft's MC function language, but for basically any other type of data pack in Minecraft, you will be using JSON. So I've just created an example JSON file, as you can see. So as I already said, JSON JSON, J-S-O-N, stands for JavaScript Object Notation, so first I'm going to talk about what objects are. So basically an object in JSON is just two curly brackets that can have other stuff inside. And so this is the reason why all JSON files in Minecraft start with a curly bracket and end with another curly bracket. So for example, this is the cauldron's block tag. As you can see it is contained within an object because it starts and ends with a curly bracket. And in Visual Studio Code you can actually just click this arrow. Uh, to close an object. This is the acacia boat crafting recipe. As you can see, it starts and ends with a curly bracket. It is contained within an object. The bastion remnant structure file is also all contained within an object because it starts and ends with a curly bracket. This is the free the end advancement. It starts and ends with a curly bracket. And then this is the crimson forest biome file, which as you can see is contained within an object. So as you can probably see in all those examples, there is usually stuff inside of an object. So objects can hold a variety of different values, and those values are stored in keys. So what a key looks like is just a string. It has a quotation mark and some letters inside of it. So you can basically put anything you want in here uh, as the name of the key. However, the keys in Minecraft data packs are all lowercase and have underscores to separate words. And then to store a value in a key, you just put a colon and then put whatever you want the value to be. So I'm just going to but something like this. So there are some different kinds of things that you can put inside of a key. So the first one is string. So the value for a string is just going to be uh, inside of two quotation marks, a string of characters. This could be a string or you could put like hello or basically you can put anything you want in here as long as it is between these two quotation marks. So in most places in data packs, you won't be able to use custom strings. So for example, here you can use uh, preset strings by Minecraft um, that have a namespace and then a colon and then uh, just the rest of the stuff here. So, for example, if I wanted to list the name of a biome, I could put my namespace uh, and then where the biome is. And this would be an example of a string, but it is used to find a file location. One of the few examples of just regular strings like this that you can use in data packs are in stuff like custom advancements right here, where you can have a custom string that shows up as the name of an advancement or as the description for an advancement. However, in vanilla advancements, they don't even have that because they translate something in the language file. However, of course, the location in the language file is still stored as a string. So the next type of value that you can see after a key is a number like this. So it can just be a uh, full number or you can have like decimal places after it. And a lot of the time in Minecraft you are restricted to using a number in a specific range, but you can basically store any type of number within a number key. The next type of value is a boolean value, and so this can either be true or false. And so for example, one of the things you see this in is a dimension type file where you have lots of things that you're setting to true or false, such as like whether beds explode or whether like a compass works. And you do have to remember that you don't need quotation marks around a boolean value or else it turns into a string. But this is the only place that you will see a word that does not have quotation marks around it. Except of course for a null value, which is just basically an empty value. And I don't think this is ever used in making Minecraft data packs. So you're probably not going to need to use this at all if you're just using JSON for making Minecraft data packs. So one thing that of course I really need to mention before moving on is these commas. 
So every key and value combination needs to have a comma after it, unless it is the last key and value combination in an object. So as you can see, this one has a comma after it, this one has a comma, this one has a comma, and this one doesn't. If I delete this comma, I will get an error because it expected a comma. So if you are using something like Visual Studio Code, it will tell you what you did wrong uh, and you'll easily be able to fix it. However, if you are using something like Notepad or Notepad++ to edit data packs like I used to, you will not get any helpful error messages like that. If you are using Notepad++, I strongly suggest you switch to something like Visual Studio Code. I should just mention that if you want, you can do something like this and put everything on the same line, but this is ugly and you should not do this. You should format it properly by putting every value on a different line because this does not look good and neither does this. Neither of these look good. You'll find vanilla Minecraft files formatted like this where it all looks nice and neat and is easy to read. So as I said, these are all the basic value types. However, you can also put an object inside of an object. I now have an object inside of an object and if I wanted to, I could copy all of this and put it inside of this as well. So this is partially what gets Minecraft datapack files so complicated, is that you can just infinitely place objects inside of objects, and then you end up with a ton of uh, curly brackets inside of curly brackets, and it could all get super confusing. However, if you format your file correctly, it should still be easy enough to read. And then the last type of value, finally, is an array, which is going to have square brackets instead of curly brackets. And so an array is basically a list of values that are all under the same key. So, for example, I could put 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in here, and this could be an array. Or you could have, for example, 1, true, null, waffle, and 5. So you can mix the different types of values. And then, if you want, you can even have another object in here, and this is also a valid array. And of course, you do have to put a comma after every value in an array, just like how you have to put a comma after every key value pair in an object. So, like, for example, if I wanted to have another object in here, I would need to put a comma after this one, and I could have a second object. So it is important that you remember to put a comma um, wherever it is needed, and not, for example, here where it is not needed, because then it will think that there is supposed to be another value after this. So let me give some examples of how this applies to actual stuff in the game. If I do slash data get entity at s, you're going to get this huge object that barely fits in the chat. As you can see, this is my entity data. It starts off with a curly bracket up here and ends with a curly bracket down here. But this is too much information. So I'm going to try to get a few specific pieces of information out of this. If I do slash data get entity at s dimension, it's going to find the key called dimension within my uh, entity data object and return the value, which is Minecraft overworld. If I get my entity data again, you can see that right here is where my key value pair for my dimension is. If I want to get the position that I'm standing at, I can do slash data get entity at s pause. That will give me the array of my location in number values for x, y, and z that can be found in my entity data object. And if I want to just get one of the values from the array, I can do the exact same command except instead of just pause, I'll do pause square bracket zero square bracket, which will give me the first value in the array. If I instead do one, it'll give me the second value, which is my y coordinate. And if I do two, it will give me the third value, which is my z coordinate. That's because in JSON, every value in an array is numbered, starting with zero and counting up. If instead I put three, I won't get anything because there are only three values in the array, zero, one, and two. If I do the command data get entity at s warden spawn tracker, I'm going to get an object within my entity data object. So this is then an object within an object. And if I want to get values for specific keys within the object, I have to do, for example, a warden spawn tracker dot warning level. And then I will get the value for one of the keys inside the object. I can also do warden spawn tracker dot tick since last warning. And I will get the value for that key, which has changed because it goes up by one every tick. And I can do warden spawn tracker dot cooldown ticks and I will get uh, this value. Anyway, that's it for this video. 
I hope you found the stuff in this video helpful, and I hope that it helps you understand how to make data packs better in the future. I'd like to again thank Ender for helping me make this video, and if you liked this video and you want to see more like this, you can subscribe if you want. It would be very appreciated. Thanks for watching.